Hi guys, Dr. Linda Kramer. Okay, a lot of people ask me what it was like when I woke up after I died. So today I'm not going to talk about what happened physically to my body because it was a little bit black. Okay, um, if you do want to know what happened when I woke up to my physical body, I've got it in my book, Five Years in Heaven, The Teachings of Heaven. And I talk about it from page 205, waking up, okay? Whoops, open it up. There it is, waking up, chapter 18, okay? On page 205. But what I want to say is today, I'm going to do a little excerpt, a couple of little lines. Um, on page 208, this is what I wrote. For even before I arrived back at my house, in which I died because remember I died in the toilet my ESP and perception was totally attuned and in sync with the universe some pretty amazing brilliant things happened to me right from the first moments from waking up in the ICU room from the hospital for more information on that you'll need to read my book about psychic abilities well yes I'm writing a few books okay still trying to update this ghost one okay so let's go into some of these amazing things <coughs> Sorry. First all, of all, I need to clarify here that I was a sickly child. My mum tells me that during the first two years of my life, I was in and out of hospital quite a lot. I was going to a lot of doctors. Um, there were times there where mum um, thought I died as a child. Could this be the link to psychic abilities? Okay. It's one of those things that I've always debunked. And I know some of you will get that little aha moment here and say, I know what you're talking about. Let's go deeper into this, okay? Because I've always had the ability to talk to ghosts and spirits and that knowing of just knowing things without being taught or learned how to have it or know it, okay? So when I woke up in the hospital in North Carolina, um, I was still in the ICU for a few days before they put me into my own bedroom, you know, in my own private suite. And this nurse came in and I was still extremely groggy because I'd been in a coma. Obviously, my body had. I'd been at home for five years. Hello. I, I was feeling great, but my body was feeling like yuck, right? So this nurse came in and she was playing with the tubes coming out of me because I had still had heaps of drips in me. Um, cannulas like look you can see all my scars from all the needles that I've had um, so she was still checking on me right and I just looked at her and I knew I knew so I looked at her and I said how's Motley and she looked how do you know Motley and I said oh my god you've been here all week telling me about your cat Motley is an old cat. He's 14 years old. He's got long brownish grayish hair. He's got kidney trouble. You've taken him to the vet. It's been confirmed, but you don't know whether to put him down or to buy a new cat. Um, you don't, you're worried about Motley. I, um, I don't know whether you're going to get a new little kitten to have him as a, as a retirement pet or whatever, but you're very, very worried about Motley. Oh, and it's going to cost you $3,000 to put him down. She looked at me like, like this. She said, how do you know about Motley? How, everything you just said was true. He is at 14 years old. He has got the fur that you talk about. He, he, he has got kidney trouble. I've taken him to the vet. It's $3,000 for the operation. How do you know all this? How do you know all this? Those lines are something very common that I do get asked a lot. So just to finish this story about Motley, um, she actually turned to me and she said, how do you know all this? And I said, honey, you've been here all week telling me about Motley every day. She looked at me and she said, that's not true. This is my first day in ICU in two months. 
I usually work floor two floors below this floor with ICU on it and I've never met you before today so how did I know all that stuff about a woman's cat because she was thinking about Motley while she was at work it is this connection that we get it's I call it conscious connection it's a connection of our conscious awareness okay even though in this girl hadn't been in ICU she'd been two floors down her energy that I this is what I believe what she had been creating in her mind because she's thinking about her cat and she's very emotional about it because emotions create energy which creates conscious awareness okay that's like a little formula and I should write that down at some point because it's our emotions that creates the energy it like fuels that conscious awareness so I had some other interesting things that happened to me they put me into my own room and in the room I'm in the bed next to me on this wall is a huge window because I'm against the wall in front of me is a chair in the corner near the window there's a TV straight above my bed and over here is the ensuite with a bathroom shower and the front door into my suite that I had <clears throat> I woke up probably day two that I was in my own room in the chair was sitting an old lady behind her was a man probably in his late 40s early 50s there was another person there and on the floor at the women's felt there was a child and there was also this dog a dog the dog looked like a sandy colored Alsatian type dog and I knew that they were not human because I could see through all of them I could they were transparent I could see through all five of them so there was four humans plus the dog so I'm just lying in bed waking up observing what they're saying how they're laughing some of them were laughing the dog was wagging its tail going around the little girl sitting on the floor and a nurse came in she's got a clipboard <coughs> no, she's got a clipboard she walks in all official she comes over to my bed and she says how do you feel today and I said it's really good because I'm watching them she looks to the chair she looks back to me looks back to the chair looks back at me says who are you looking at I said well there's an old lady sitting in the chair there's a man there's another guy there's a little girl there's a dog she says Linda there's nobody there so I just casually look at the window and the chair where they're all sitting congregating and I said if you guys can let this woman know that you're here that'd be sweet thank you very much so this pane of glass in the window it extended the whole room instantly when I said can you guys please do something to let her know that you're here bang 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 on the glass you know when you hit glass and it like quivers and all the reflection goes crazy this woman drops her um, clipboard she ran from the room and she never came back to see me again after that hmm interesting story who were those people though and I will go there they're people who have died at the hospital waiting it's something that I'm now um, used to I'm used to it I'm used to it that's what I'll say I go to a hospital and um, it's quite sad it is it's it's extremely sad you know I, I go up um, I like going up to the cha chaplains at church um, in hospitals because there's usually one or two in there that are just lost waiting and they want answers 
So I like going to church, um, to the church or the chapel in hospitals because, you know, you usually find one or two in there that are waiting for somebody. So generally what happens to me, I'll tell you a story just to divert from what happened to me when I woke up. Um, I had to go and see a friend in hospital a few years back and she wasn't too far from me in hospital so I went over and she was up on the second floor so when you walk in you're in the big foyer and there's elevators so I got in an elevator went upstairs and as the doors opened there was about 50 people standing there they're all looking in the elevator to see who's in the elevator the people that were in the elevator with me they just walk out they didn't even see the queues and the people they didn't even see them there was no recognition there at all no acknowledgement that they were there so I've just stood there looking at them all. Some of them had hospital gowns on. Some of them had clothes. Some had their suitcases with flowers. So they're waiting to go home. They're waiting to be picked up. They're unaware that they've passed over. It's quite sad. So these five that were in my hospital when I first woke up, they were the same. Don't know why the dog was there though. You know, hello. Dogs don't usually die at hospitals. But obviously it's that connection again. So if you do have a comment about dogs in hospital, please let me know. But it's through that connection. So, you know, it could have been the pet of somebody else that was standing there at the end of my bed that day, right? So I had some interesting events in hospital. But it was when I got home was the really cool stuff used to happen, which does still happen to me today. So we drove home. Now, when I look at Google Maps, the hospital to where I lived was only about a 10, 13 minute drive at maximum. Okay, straight down 601 highway in the US. So we got home and um, my ex-husband said, hey, I've got to go to work today. Thanks for leaving me at home the first day at a hospital. Yep, that's what it was like. So I just allowed that one. So he went to work and the first day I just stayed in bed because my body was still weak, you know, I had to recharge it, etc. So it was like the second or the third day where I actually managed to get out of bed and I made it out onto the front steps. We had three steps at the front of the house um, leading up to the front door. On either side were two huge maple trees, huge maple trees probably 25 30 foot tall these guys were so this day I open the front door and I go out onto the front steps and I'm sitting there in the sun just thinking yeah this is so sweet and I heard Linda so I'm looking around thinking I'm home alone we don't have any pets or anything else I knew some of the neighbors okay I did know some of the neighbors so I'm looking at their houses thinking who's around I could not see anybody so I'm just sitting there in the sun again Linda <clears throat> with more emphasis this time and I thought that came from my left that came from my left so I'm looking around you know how your ears prick when you hear a voice I'm thinking who is that is it the neighbor because I knew the neighbor next door no not him he's at work his car's gone it's not across the road it wasn't that far away you know because my ears pricked and it was only a few feet in front of me so I just returned back to just sitting in the sun Linda <clears throat> and I go straight to the voice this time and it was the maple tree the one to my left so I'm looking at this tree and I'm looking up because it had quite a lot of branches and um, leaves on this tree huge maple tree and I look at this tree and I thought, is this going to work here? That was the first thing I thought, is this going to work here? Now, let me exact, um, explain that. When I was in heaven, you talk to a tree, the tree talks back. It's true. Okay. When you talk to a dog, it opens its mouth and starts blah, 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 blah in English or whatever other the language that you want it to. So it was normal where I'd been. But sitting here in the three-dimensional world again, it seemed weird that a tree would be talking to me. So I looked at this tree and I said, was that you? And I heard, yes. 
And now this time that I'm looking at the tree, when I heard the word yes, my ears pricked and it was the tree that was talking. Okay, the tree was talking to me. I didn't hear it here. I heard it inside my head, but my ears still pricked to the voice where it came from. Okay, trees don't have mouths, they don't have tongues, they don't have vocal cords, okay? They don't have eyes, they don't have ears. So how is this thing talking and knowing that I was there? Unless it has a conscious awareness of its own. And it also has that telepathy of what I had when I was at heaven. Where everything is connected and everything knows everything else about everybody and everything else. And we're all connected through our telepathy. Okay? So, I looked at this tree. Because I'm now like sitting up, you know, thinking, yep, I've got its attention now. And I said, if you can move to let me know that it's you, can you please do it for me? Now, I want to explain something. The day that I was sitting outside, there was no breeze. There was no wind at all. But as I'm sitting there and I asked this tree to move, not only did every leaf, every branch do this quiver, but all these branches, um, the leaves came up you know what a maple leaf looks like okay it's got like three fingers you know a maple leaf these leaves not only came off but they came straight over to me and surrounded me with all these leaves so I was covered in probably a hundred maple leaves and I'm sitting there and I picked one up and I was looking at this maple leaf and instantly not only was I the leaf, but I was still part of the tree because that leaf had just fallen off the tree. So it's all about this connection, okay? Energetic connection through our consciousness. So the tree talked to me. Trees still do talk to me occasionally now, okay? If I raise up my vibration and I really... Um, get back into that place of where I was when I was in home okay because we do get distracted and stuff in this three-dimensional world where it just doesn't work that often so trees still do talk to me cars furniture clothing talk to me okay I love it when people come over and they say um, can you tell me about my car yep it's telling me that it's got um, a rip on the passenger's upholstery it needs air in its back tire oh and you've got a hole in the exhaust system because cars and vehicles clothing plants even ornaments talk to me okay it's an interesting life that I lead so a couple of other psychic abilities that happened um, I was sitting outside on the three steps leading into the house because I did that for like two weeks right <clears throat> when I got up because when I got out out of hospital because I did not have the muscular strength to walk around that much okay so I was sitting there one day and I started singing this song it was actually Fleetwood Mac. Don't stop thinking about tomorrow. I thought, what is this song? So I got up, went inside, turned on the radio. And guess what song was on the radio? Not only was it just starting, it was just starting. But it was on that specific radio channel that I was already on. Huh? How did that work? So let me explain. I was sitting there singing Don't Stop by Fleetwood Mac stood up opened the doors because there was two a screen and the front door opened one opened the other went through turned on the radio the guy just finished talking and then don't stop by Fleetwood Mac started how did that work I knew 30 odd seconds prior that it was going to be on the radio that's something I can still do I call it the 30 second warning I have a three so I'm a 30 second warning so um, it is funny how just 30 odd seconds before something happens I'll get this knowing I just know I just know that's going to happen okay that's one reason why sometimes because not all the time but sometimes I'll pick up my phone and just as I look at it it'll start to ring I can be asleep in bed and I'll wake up and about 
25, 30 seconds later, my phone will ring. Okay? I'll think about someone and 30 seconds later, they'll ring. So I call it my 30 second warning. Okay? Some people it's three minutes. Some people it's 30 minutes. But it's funny how three is a common denominator there. Because we've got to look at these similarities and these commonalities with what happens. Okay? So that's another lovely thing that I can do. Okay? My 30 second warning. Okay? Um, the other thing is my premonition. So I've always had premonition dreams all the time growing up. Um, I dream things and three days later they come true. So there's that three again. Sometimes I'll hear three knocks. And you think, what are those about? Is it a warning? Something's about to happen. Is it a loved one coming through saying, here I am? Or is it something else totally unrelevant that I haven't thought about? <clears throat> so sometimes I hear the three knocks. And I always hear them here. But it sounds like it's over there somewhere. Okay? Over there somewhere. Okay? But you hear it here in your head. Okay? Sometimes I hear voices in my head and I think, who the hell was that? I get the tone and I get the depth of their, their, um, their tone, um, <clears throat> the octave on which they speak, etc., or the accent. So I think, who in the hell are these people? Okay, so that's another thing that I do. Um, speaking to ghosts and spirit, well, hello. I do that every day, okay? I do it every day that has not switched off. And that's something that I want to tell you today. Once... Oh, I've got to be careful how I say this, guys, because I don't want to sound condescending at all. It's only because I've researched this for now so long. People who've had an NDE or when we get sick, our psychic abilities start playing up. OK, it's a common thing that happens when people get sick or they get a migraine and they get this ESP or deja vu will happen when you've got a headache. And you think, well, didn't I just think of that while I'm throbbing out with this pain in my head? Um, so there's all these things that do happen to us when we get sick do not make yourself sick okay in order to have this because it can be dangerous okay not everybody comes back from there okay like an end of year okay a lot of us don't come back so please don't don't meddle with this at all okay we've got to remember fate and we've got to remember our free will and we've also got to remember our life contracts okay um, but Ultimately, what I've noticed is people who do get sick tend to have the NDEs and the psychic abilities, okay? Um, a lot of weird stuff happens to me um, that does happen commonalities with other people as well, okay? That's why they have names like Claire Audience, Claire Sentience, and all the rest of the Claires, as I call them, the rest of the Claires, okay? So, guys, um, that was just a little video about what what it was like when I woke up especially mentioning the trees because it was it was like when I was in heaven the trees spoke to me that we're connected so in the back of my book <clears throat> where I talk about this I just want to go there um, on page 209 it's the end of the first book five years in heaven okay why did this experience happen to me of all people <laughs> me for who am i ultimately i am just like you one of the masses who is trying her best in a world gone mad trying to be the best version of herself i am nothing special not important or even mildly better than you for i am you that's my quote in the back of my book we are all the same guys we can all have this innate ability that's the thing that I really do want to push out there you know it's not just me saying oh this is my experiences I'm sharing what happened to me because it can happen to all of us if we decide that we want it so stay tuned guys more videos are coming okay have a great day bye To learn more about your Solistic Alignment, please press the like button and click subscribe. 
To purchase any of Dr. Linda Kramer's books or services, please visit www.lindaray.info.